Hi, and welcome to Lesson Face Presents. Thank you so much for joining us, Rebecca. Mm, thank you. That was gorgeous, what you just played. Could we start by you talking about your process for composing that? And Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, so that song, um, it's called Inner City Angels, and it's from my second, or my first Saltland album. And that was, when I, I've, I've been in bands playing music for like 20 years, and then I um, decided at a certain point to try and be courageous and jump into new territory um, and start singing. And I had never sung really before, except for in my old band, Silver Mount Zion, as like backup vocals. And so I had no idea what my voice sounded like. And I had no idea how to do it. I just knew I, I needed for myself to sing and sing about issues that I care about. And so I started to uh, build loops with the cello as a platform to be able to sing. And so that's, that's one of the first songs I ever wrote. And that song, um, it's actually dedicated, my mom has a, a charity organization that she runs in Toronto called Inner City, Inner, Inner City Angels. Oh, wow. And it's, it works with inner city youth. It brings artists into inner city schools in Toronto. And I've always been so moved by the kids there. And um, so it's a, it's a bit of a dedication and love to, to that organization. But yeah, that's how I started, was beginning to build loops with the cello and then singing on top of it. And then my second album um, is called A Common Truth, and that album is very much um, about climate change and the state of our world and the role of cities with climate change. And yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that's, uh, that's incredible. So you've, when did, when did you start with the cello? I started when I was eight. And I started, I don't come from a musical family. Like now I have, my sister is extremely musical, but when I was the first born and my, my parents knew nothing about music. But I was very lucky because my elementary school, it was a public elementary school in Canada in Vancouver, and they had a string program. And oh, I wow. fell in love with the cello at, at like six years old, watching these kids play the cello in, in the string ensemble. And that's how I was able to start playing. So I'm a total advocate for music in schools. <laughs> That's great, yeah. Yeah, so you had been playing the cello for quite a while and then added on voice. Just, that's a, it seems incredibly brave to. Yeah, I guess I needed, I needed it spiritually or something. I needed to, to dive into a different realm and express myself in a new way. Yeah, that's a, that's fantastic. And it's, it's such a beautiful, um, song and an album I Thank yeah you. um yeah a little bit more about about Rebecca um she is the founder of Juno award-winning group Asmarine um and you've also produced multiple acclaimed albums with Saltland which is what you just played from you're co-founder of Jungle Keepers Pathway to Paris Moto Yoga in New York City and Montreal-based Sustainability S Solutions Group uh it's Amazing your um, your background. Uh, how do you how do you balance your time? Like how do you? Spend? Well, I guess uh, <laughs> life is short and long. So so they're all projects that have. I'm, I'm blessed by these projects because they all um, they've all developed over time and at different points of time in my yeah. life, and with diff with all with beautiful partnerships that I'm so grateful for, like-minded people that I really care about and. Um, and none of these could have happened without them. So I've been blessed with stars aligning and multiple beautiful visions coming together to create things. And um, so for all these different projects, they're, all, they're, com they're very much love projects for me and um, they all fuel each other in different ways yeah. and they all inspire each other. They're all linked together for me and uh, keep me really inspired in life get me out of bed in the morning. <laughs> so, but yeah, I, in terms of balancing them, I, my time um, kind of has evolved in different ways every year. It's a bit different and there's lots of people involved in them now. So they have a life of their own. That's, that's amazing that you can start them and then. Yeah, uh, it's incredible. Move on to, um, so what are you working on for the most part currently? So right now, um, well, one, 
when the, um, I co-founded Pathway to Paris with a wonderful friend of mine, Jesse Paris Smith, and we've been putting on concert events um, all over the world since 2014, mm -hmm. all related to turning the Paris Agreement into reality. That's why it's called Pathway to Paris. Mm -hmm. And so that's been um, very busy over the last few years. And, um, and this year is, is a big year for countries of the world coming together to look at the targets in the Paris Agreement. So we'll be busy this year yeah. doing things as well. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. What are, what are you guys, so what, how, what are you, what are you working on exactly? Well, we're always, <laughs> we're always working on um, different concert events. And we have, a, we have a, an initiative called the Thousand Cities Initiative for Carbon Freedom. I signed the petition today. Yay, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's the a petition. I, there's a petition, care2.com <laughs> backslash thousand cities. And, but the, the idea behind Thousand Cities is, so Pathway to Paris is very deeply concerned, and this relates to music. Um, and ter we really care about highlighting the importance of and solutions, innovative solutions to turning the Paris Agreement into reality mm -hmm. and meeting those targets and going above and beyond those targets so that we can continue as a planet for future generations and be a sustainable planet, hopefully, one day. And so, um, so the idea be behind, so the concert events are, are there to stimulate awareness um, around the Paris Agreement and the importance of turning it into reality as well as offering solutions. And one of our solutions is the Thousand Cities um, initiative, which is based on the idea that if a thousand cities around the world can come together and all mandate um, within their climate action planning and target 100% renewable energy and zero emissions, so no longer using f fossil fuels by 2040, then we can turn the Paris Agreement into action. And so it's basically, it's pretty cool to imagine a world at that time, like in 2040, it's like, it's cool to make our brains evolve in that way to start imagining and dreaming up a world that's no longer using fossil fuels. Right, yeah, 21 years. Yeah, so yeah. I think music is a really powerful tool to, to inspire and also to sing about um, critical issues of our time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Actually, that, um, that is a brilliant segue into what I wanted to ask you about. Lesson Face is a music education community. So most of our audience, all of our audience, I should say, are musicians, well, music teachers, music students, and uh, some who are, you know, a mix of those things. So how would you recommend that music, you know, musicians who have an audience or those who are just kind of starting, mm -hmm. like, what are the ways, um, do you think the voice of the music is the most powerful way? Are there other ways that musicians should be acting in order to promote more sustainable, uh, sustainability? What, what do you recommend? Yeah, like, I, I really do believe more and more that this is our time to act whatever it is that we're passionate about and if we're blessed in this life to really find our passion and live our passion and if music is that f for music f for you that it is that this is our time to truly walk into the space of making a positive contribution for all and to move in that and and to channel that through music so so however that means for you but but we are definitely in a a critical time in in the world in terms of our faith, looking at our own extinction in the face and um and it's not too late like we have this window this 10 12 year window of really making critical shifts so if you th if like if you think about it we've got this <laughs> short amount of time in our lifetime to to live or die like as a planet it's like it's, it's incredible like terrifying and incredible and so I, I really do think every human on earth is like it's our almost it's our duty to, yeah, <laughs> to do whatever we can yeah. to yeah to make a positive contribution 
Yeah. And all those little contributions. If, if that, it's that intention, I think, more than anything. Yeah. More than the, because measuring impact can be so confusing because it's, it's such a wacky time, but working with that intention, I think, is really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I saw on, I think it was on the Pathway to Paris site that you, that y'all urge, so for the Thousand Cities Initiative, especially, it seems like you were trying, you're urging people to urge their local politicians yeah, to join, to join, to, to join on. Um, and I, I saw that you had a bunch of cities that you had like examinations of what they're doing and New York City was not on the list or is New York City, oh, yeah. are we on? New York the? is, is um, okay. yeah, it's a flagship city for sure and, okay, and is, is doing amazing <laughs> work and is just starting to do incredible work, like to build off the work, th incredible work that it's already been doing, but but um, the Thousand Cities Initiative is a new initiative, so it's it's still taking shape. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, I'm glad. Um, I'm glad for that. I, I and I should mention that if anybody has questions for Rebecca, um, just enter them in on uh, the YouTube channel, and we'll relay them. Um, so yeah, I was wondering, and I I think that's I I love what you say about the intentions being the most essential part yeah. of making this critical moment, making the right actions in this critical moment. But yeah. I was wondering like, if there are things like, I was thinking about things that might be music specific, like where well, you get funny. your merch or like how you lay out your yeah, tour. Yeah, like, absolutely. Anything well, like that? Yeah, definitely. Like merch, definitely working with local artists and um, buy, you know, if you can buy or get, um, work it into buy organic, right. fair trade, made in North America. Merch is always amazing, and measuring just measuring your overall impact is always something we should all be doing all the time. Right. In terms of because touring is so high impact. Yeah. But I do also think beyond just like behavioral changes. Um, on I guess for me, I am definitely entering a spiritual realm for myself with music and. I really do believe that music, like the most, music is a chance to channel something from ourselves that's linked to something that we're all linked to, mm -hmm. whatever that, whatever you want to call that, that interconnection. And, um, and it comes back to that intention, I think, of the intention of caring about all beings on earth and caring about our planet and then also being an open vessel to make music and connecting that is really, really beautiful. And I think I really do feel more and more that tapping into that is like where it all begins and where, where, it, where peace on earth can come from. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so how, how, how would you recommend like somebody who's just getting into the practice of music or maybe just into the practice of being more intentional about that sort of like thought, how, how should they tap into the... To, to that channel <laughs> or that flow? Um, well, I can tell you some trick, like I think it's a lifelong journey of trying to tap into the ocean of ideas in a way where you are free to dive into it. But I do think uh, meditation is very, very helpful. The, I really do feel that, say, the ocean of ideas inside of us that we all have, that creative space that we all have, um, musicians, artists, or any anybody, we're all creative beings, that um, I think that ego and insecurity and all the wacky emotions we feel in life can be seen almost as noise pollution in our channel and that the more we can kind of live a stress-free, like work with the intention and try, and try to cultivate a stress-free, anxiety-free life, mm. um, the more we are able to access like really rich parts of ourselves. Um, and I think that's really, really beautiful. And so I, I do think meditation um, or any kind of techniques that help you kind of almost like turn off a switch so that you can access um, 
so you're not thinking too much and not and also finding a peaceful place within yourself to to tap into ideas almost in that like where consciousness and subconsciousness kind of come together or something but yeah so I I, I do very much meditation is a big part of my life so I I think it's really helped me in terms of growing as an artist and find and finding the confidence to to try to to try new things and and dive into new ideas and how long have you been, how long have you been meditating um you know i not that long i oh, really? yeah i i've dabbled with it my hope from years but probably only a year of serious meditation and i guess that's why i bring it up because i've I've noticed a, um, it's just had a huge impact on my life. Really? Yeah. Yeah. How do you, um, I know there's some like apps that people are really into for meditation. Do you use one of those? Or yeah, do I don't, but I know lots of people that do and swear by them. Yeah. So, so serious meditation, like how, what are we talking time wise? Oh, the thing about, the thing <laughs> about meditation, you know, it's such a, yeah. <laughs> but I do think the thing about meditation is um, you can integrate it into your day you know like you can you can meditate in the morning and night for 20 minutes or whatever mm -hmm. but then also when you're in a car or the subway or walking down the street or doing exercise any type of exercise mm -hmm. or even when you're having a conversation you can like integrate the same kind of I don't know sense of peace into every moment yeah yeah um yeah, and you've been doing it for just a year. That's that's inspiring because yeah, I feel kind of intimidated about trying meditation myself. Right, I think yeah, I think if you just go recently. for it, then yeah. you can start to find um, the your own personal benefits of it. But the reason why I just bring it up is I do think that trying to cultivate a stress-free life mm. helps so much with the artistic practice. Yeah. Yeah, and it's such a challenge yeah, to do that. Yeah, it is, especially today's world. Is there anything beyond meditation that you found helps uh, with your with Oh, you know, yeah, well, just being healthy, I guess, in general, like exercising and trying to get a good night's sleep and <laughs> all of <laughs> yeah. the basics. Right, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, um, and uh, how? so you've said a lot about you stay inspired by by working on new projects and working on these projects that you're very passionate about. Um, yeah. Do you have any ad advice for people like really tapping into finding their own passion or how should they experiment with things? Like, have you tried things that didn't work? Oh yeah, I, I really do feel like life is about curiosity mm -hmm. and awakening the heart. Like I. I truly do think it sounds so wild, but that we're here within this like little amount of time on planet Earth together, and the only real thing is to be curious and open-hearted and and kind to each other, and have a good time. <laughs> 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 but and so I think in terms of like cultivating your passion, I think if you take the curious mind approach mm -hmm. and not worry too much about like. Don't try not to get swallowed up by any plan, too much of a plan. Mm. It's good to have a little bit of a plan, but right. like with insecure, or swallowed up in a doubt, self doubt, or insecurities, or whatever it is, or overconfidence, or whatever <laughs> it is, like just to, to look from a almost like a third eye perspective all the time and a curious perspective and, and see what magic comes your way. You know, like it's, I think just life is so cool. Being alive is so cool. Yeah. What, what do you mean by a third eye perspective? I just think that with, I guess, more and more, I feel like all the beautiful things that I've tapped into with my passions, it was, it just, it was like falling in love. You know, it's like with the cello, I fell in love with the cello and then I fell in love with singing or I fell in love with playing piano or um, I'm not necessarily great at it I'm not good at piano at all but I fell in love with it and I and or I fell in love with con conservation project in the Amazon or I fell in love with um, working with 
Jesse uh, with Pathway to Paris and organizing these concert events and the thousand like it's just like these things that really excite me. But it wasn't like um, I wasn't I don't know. It just kind of organically came through that. It's just like being on the path, and then these things kind of come your way, I guess. Yeah, and you're yeah, and you're open open to, to it. Them. Yeah, yeah, being open to it. That's that's really awesome. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a? Uh, oh, um, let's see. We do. We have a question. What practice exercise would you recommend to improve your, your training? training? Ooh, it's a great question. It's funny. I was just. Oh, my sister is a classical violinist, and an incredible classical violinist, and her ear training is really good. <laughs> we were talking about perfect pitch, and because I was like, "Does perfect." pitch really exists? And she said, no, perfect pitch doesn't exist. Um, mm. Everyone, it's just relative pitch, but some people's relative pitch is almost perfect. <laughs> and I was like, oh, really? So you're not just, because I thought you could be born yeah, with perfect pitch. Yeah. Maybe you can, this might be a contentious question, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I do like the idea that you can kind of train your ear to, um, to, to be almost perfect, even if you're not born with perfect pitch, if that is a thing. So, so for example, my sister has incredible, she basically has perfect pitch, and she says it's from training. And I, my, I do not have perfect pitch at all. <laughs> <laughs> and so we were working together, and it was, this is what I, I just like doing it with her, where it's just make it fun, you know, and just play, she'll just sing a note, and then I'll have to guess what note it is. And she'll, we'll just have fun, like, on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll, she'll just, like, sing a bunch of different notes. I'll be like, A, <laughs> no. <laughs> and then be like, no, here, listen, this is what an A is. And then 20 minutes go by. It's good with a partner, basically. Yeah. And it, it's, it's a fun way to, to improve your ear. Yeah, so find <laughs> someone with perfect pitch. Not necessarily. Just have a keyboard, but you can't right. hear the note. Or, or you can use the keyboard as, instead of singing it. But just to have someone who can kind of have the driver's seat and right. quiz you right. until you get it into your head. I just think it's like if I did that every day, I bet my, my, I would be closer to perfect bitch yeah. over time. Um, okay, we have another from Santi Solano. How difficult is it to be a musician in 2019? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I think that question is so different for everybody. but. For me, it's very much based on where I am right now at this time. For me, and for me, music is a spiritual practice. Like it's very much um, a place where I open my heart and like awaken my heart and it, it, try to like dive into a, a different realm. Like I really try to go somewhere else when I play. Um, so in ter because I work. I, that's very important to me, and it's part of my falling in love with music, is that space where you can kind of go somewhere else. Mm. Because the world is so insane right now, music is kind of saving me, if that makes sense. So in terms of how difficult it is to be a musician, in a way it's like, it's almost like looking at it from the opposite perspective. Like for me, I need music more than anything right now. Right, how difficult would it be to, to not, not be a musician? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. That's, uh, well, I'm very glad that you have music. Okay. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> you too. <laughs> um, are you a New Year's resolutions person? Do a little you, bit, yeah. Do you have one that you would share? Or, well, it's I guess private, it's a bit personal, really, but yeah. I, with mu it's with music. I um, I last year was a, I I have always for the last twenty years been, on a, been making albums and every year working on an album. And last year, for some reason, I had my very first year, and this is where the meditation thing came in, where I just couldn't play music. It was really weird. Like I couldn't play the way I used to. I was, I just was completely, like my drive died. I, and I, because I'm a pretty like driven, passionate person. And last year I was just not able to produce. 
And so, but I meditated a lot. And, and then this year, luckily it came back and it came back a lot. Um, and that's why I talk so much about the meditation because I, I was really able to, I'm able to access new places in myself that I have never been able to access before, which is really exciting for me. And, and so this year, my New Year's resolution is to make, I'm working on a new album, Salt oh, Land, wow. and, and a couple other albums with friends. Oh, cool. Yeah. Thank you so much, Rebecca, for coming in and oh, talking yeah. to us. I, I think your path has been incredibly cool. Uh, you're doing such amazing work, and I'm very excited to see where you go next with it. Oh, thank you. Do you have um, anything else that you feel like advice for aspiring musicians, aspiring music teachers, actual music teachers? Dive in and not be, um, really be courageous. I think being courageous is, and as a teacher, to, to help your students be courageous and dive in mm. and find their passion and find themselves is what life's all about.
Thank you so much, Rebecca.